Good afternoon. My name is Anthony Lowe from General Motors Europe Advanced Design. Uh, today, I think we're going to present uh, uh, to you the 94X biopower concept. But before I do that, I'd like to tell you a little bit the history of what, uh, or how long I've been involved with the Saab brand. And uh, in, in the 2000, I joined uh, GM Saab and uh, as an advanced uh, chief designer. And in that time, I think uh, since then, I've been working in Saab in Sweden until actually the end of, uh, or the middle of 2006. And, but in this time, I have also worked on other brands, but I can tell you a little bit more later. Um, you're familiar with some of the show cars. Uh, we have worked as, as a team uh, um, when, the, when Michael Mao was still there. Uh, we, I think in 2001, we showed the first concept car, the 9X. Then in 2002, the 93X. Then we have the Sport Hatch concept. And then, we, and, then the, and then after that, I think we kind of have a, a little bit quiet uh, years. Partly because we're doing a lot of internal studies on where the Saab brand should go. And, uh, and I think the result has been, I, I think, uh, coming up with new ideas of new entries into portfolio and so on. So one of, one of many ideas is the crossover concept for Saab. What does it mean? I mean, 93X is a kind of a crossover coupe, which is something we love uh, doing. But I think as a mainstream product, maybe the maybe it's a little bit limited. I think to the to in the uh, in the in the audience. So I think I think what we would like to do is uh, uh, perhaps uh, something a little bit more of a mainstream uh, for, uh, more, uh, has a has a has a little bit bigger size type of vehicle. And uh, important thing is um, that how to how to keep a car, a concept like this, also true to the Saab brand. So kind of like, like, like to start like that. I think, okay, first of all, I think the, the concept of the 94X is a crossover concept. But as you know, we are, we are quite late uh, to, to, uh, be, to join this uh, very, uh, still very much growing segment. So I think, well, I think this is kind of an important car. We have to do the right thing. Otherwise, uh, it would be very hard to compete with already many established uh, players. So what is important for, for this car and why we think our customers uh, would, 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 would be attracted to it? I think, first of all, it's uh, very sporty. Uh, it's a little bit, uh, uh, the focus is very much on the on-road dynamics. But as you know, with uh, very big wheels, uh, uh, all-wheel drive system, very, very, uh, you can also uh, go off-road if you need to, but uh, mostly it's focused on on-road performance. But uh, in terms of the whole com uh, concept, I think it's, um, it's a five-seater concept, but a very flexible rear and storage system, which uh, uh, has, uh, uh, in this particular case, we have integrated a, a ski storage uh, concept, which you can store uh, uh, three pairs of skis internally. So if you have very expensive skis that you don't want to get uh, uh, stolen, that, that's a really good way. This is actually in, uh, something we developed in collaboration with Solomon. As you may know, Solomon and Saab has been together on many, uh, sponsoring a lot of events. And, and they gave us a lot of help and insight into how people actually uh, use, uh, how people store skis and how would, what customer would like to do and also, I, we interview a lot of their designers and skiers as well to get a lot of information. So the idea, idea is that if you have a, a ski system, uh, a, a ski storage system, that you can put skis in the car, uh, and, and also you, you cannot just, I think any car, many cars you can just put them in the car. But we should also worry about safety, and this safety is a very important brand pillar for Saab. As you know, Saab has been very focused on uh, how real life safety. And I think we cannot just say, I can put some skis in the car and just strap it down or something like this. It's a little bit uh, not our way. And we think that to put skis in the car, you have to, it has to be extremely secure. Uh, it has to be uh, easy to access. And, and, and we cannot make the, the process of getting the ski in and out of the car really, really too complicated. So that's kind of the idea behind it. And I think we believe that our customers will be very excited about such a feature. Yeah, in, in, in a concept like, like the 94X. Can you tell us how the uh, concept car that will translate from this concept to production, it, you know, how that will evolve? Are there certain things that you see right now that may be carried over and certain things that you see that may not be? Okay. 
I, I think it uh, is maybe I starting a little bit with some of the design cues that inspired this car. I think uh, we have been working on kind of a lot of concept cars in the past, as I said earlier. But the major, I think, influence is coming from the Aero X. So somebody would say Aero X is a two-seater sports car, very extreme. How can this uh, design theme actually can be translated into a car in this dimension and proportion? So I think this, you can see, is a very good example. You can obviously, obviously see the family connection between this, the, the 94X and the Aero X. But, uh, but at the same time, I think many of the, the features like the front grille, like the headlamp, like the hood uh, detail, and, uh, and, and, and the lower part of the bumper and so on. Even though it has kind of the Aerox flavor, but it's done in a way that is suitable, much more suitable for this car. A little bit give you a more rugged feel. For example, I think the grille, the angle of the grille is a little bit uh, more upright to get a, the, a little bit more, and give the front end a little bit more substance to balance with the rest of the car. Uh, so on the back end as well, and uh, we have, um, a very distinctive uh, 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 signature lighting, which you will see uh, hopefully in all our future products that uh, we have a band of light, which also, uh, again, Im inspired very much by the Aero X. A, band, a light band that grows, runs the, the full width of the car. That's kind of have a, you know, from a, very, from a distance, if you're if you from the driving behind, from a distance, you can see, you cannot mistake this for another car because Saab has this, uh, that this, this uh, illuminated uh, light pipe that goes all the way. Is that it also in this particular? Yes, and it's that? also in this okay, one. So okay. maybe you can uh, uh, have, a, have a look in the back later on. Excellent. So this, this one, I think we believe that is quite very important. I think uh, headlamp and uh, tail lamp signature becomes more and more important because I think they are, uh, as, as we go into uh, uh, the future, I think the, all, the, all the premium brands we focus very much on how to appeal out to the customers in various ways. Some on maybe performance, some on features, and and uh, but I think in the design, there's there's going to be so so much competition. So we need to look at uh, uh, details and and features, which how we can differentiate ourselves uh, to uh, to another brand. So that's something we really like to work on, and I think as you can see also here that I think the, something we talk about for many years in our concept car, which is the wraparound windshield. The wraparound look and how we make it most convincing way. And I think you can see here that I think it brings back a lot of the, I think the, the strong uh, sub design cues that started off with the 99 and the 100, which is kind of up, more upright windshield with a wraparound look. And I think, we, we, I think we've done a much better job here this time in trying to make it, uh, not just making, making a wraparound and uh, uh, look, but also making it functional as well in terms of visibility and so on. It's, it's, a, it's an improvement over, over uh, 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 our competitors. Could you speak to the uh, future uh, for other products in addition to the uh, 94X, the 95, and some of these other rumors that we may have been hearing? Well, it would be very difficult. I think, I, I, I think I'm not uh, uh, sure if this is the right time to talk about future products. But what I can tell you uh, as a minimum is uh, I think we have a lot of, lot of launches coming up in the very near future. I think I can give you a, a hint of what's coming. I think uh, as uh, Carl Peter Foster uh, mentioned in his speech today, I think uh, th this is a brand that is really moving, moving, moving on. I think we have a lot of uh, exciting products Concept cars one is one thing, but production cars as well, which is kind of coming in the next, uh, uh, in the very near future. And uh, I would like to, uh, uh, I think, uh, uh, advise you to come and come and come to the next uh, motor shows and in Europe as well, and uh, Geneva Motor Show. There will be some more news there. But for the time being, I think uh, the 94X is our latest and greatest, and we are very proud of it. Excellent. Well, thank you very much for your time. You're welcome. Appreciate it. Hello, my name is Brian Nesbitt. I'm head of design for North America. And what we have today is at the Detroit Auto Show, the Saab 94X concept. And what's exciting about the 94X concept that you can see behind me is it's really the manifestation of all those signature cues that we've actually introduced in the Saab Aero X concept of last year. And now you can see it really coming together in a more realistic segment architecture like a crossover. 
And here we see a signature headlamps and tail lamps theme, the signature three-port grille of Saab, the wraparound windscreen you can see with the blacked out pillars. There's a signature C pillar. And all these cues are working together. Even the fenders are reminiscent of the Aero X. And all of that has been intentional as we evolve the Saab identity. Excellent. Can you uh, tell us about uh, some of the inspiration that uh, we might see moving forward after the 94X? I understand that maybe some of these cues will be continued from this. Absolutely. Well. In fact, the intent yeah. has been not only that these, uh, as we see exploring the cues on the 94X, but really when we created the Saab Aero X, where we created a vehicle where we could create signature cues that we could wear through an entire family, whether we were creating a crossover or a mid-size car or even a small premium if we were interested in that all of those vehicles we'd want to have a signature identity and really cues that could wear across them all as a family portrait ultimately excellent if we could look at how we see this dead on in the center here uh, could we talk a little bit about some of the specifics if we can gear into maybe the grill, and most importantly, one of the first signature cues that we see, unlike anything, is the non-continuous hood line. Mm -hmm. Could you speak out Absolutely. why that was, why it may be more raked back, and maybe other little things that are different. That's okay, than, yeah, that's a good point. Great. So, some of the details that I'd like to point out, as you can imagine, we've always had a signature clamshell hood. But we felt like as we had to evolve into a new portfolio and really evolve the identity of the brand, we wanted to interrupt that clamshell hood to create a little bit more visualization and priority of hierarchy of the grill in the three ports. You can see also the big, large word mark of Saab coming into the airfoil of the grill, this horizontal plane. All of these are working together to get a more prominent identity to the front end of Saab. This is important because the brand is still relatively invisible and this is our opportunity to make it more visible, but obviously with the Swedish values that we appreciate so much. You can also see here in the hood, there's a surfacing to the vehicle that's very significant. And I love where we ended up on this scout where it's a full section of surface and then this is scalloped out as a surface section. And this scalloped type of surface execution is exactly how we'll want to continue in the development of the surfaces for Saab. You can see here in this lower intake, this lower intake mimics a lot that was influenced by the front end of the Aero X. And if we look at the lower intakes of those, they're direct thought from the ideation that happened on the Aero X front end development. So all of those are working together to create a really, for me, the next face of Saab. Okay. A couple other things I'd like you to notice is you can see here in the signature profile of the vehicle. Of course, kind of the tap of the hat where we have a higher header, like the classic Sobs. We black out the pillar to get the wraparound windscreen graphic, and then a signature pillar, and we reinforce, reinforce that graphic with the detail, again, of the scallop sectioning that's happening that reinforces the signature of the C-pillar identity of Saab and then taking into the bright work, which creates us another, again, that signature hockey stick. Here too, you saw on the Aero X, a signature turbine-inspired wheel design, and we'll continue to evolve forward. This is a next generation version, really a more robust crossover version of that Aero X turbine wheel. On the inside, you can see that we're continuing to keep the cockpit-oriented interior. But on this 94X concept, we're looking at a new steering wheel design. You can see the nice gesture and surfacing in the door and the cues. And then you can see a new material where this is kind of, again, like the Aero X, we introduced looking at the glass making industry of Sweden, also the high-end camera manufacturing that happens in Sweden. And there's a wonderful aesthetic into the color and material. And we wanted to capture that into this interior decor and bring it in, and that's what we show here. So a lot of these cues you'll continue to see as we move into the development, more sculptural with this kind of full surface with scallop sectioning, and also a whole new identity as we get into the cluster with a three ring cluster. The three ring cluster with a, a large priority ring on the center line will continue to be a mainstay as far as we move forward in the family identity. And this concept suggests some of those solutions. Now you may have noticed on the Saab Aero X concept of last year, we had introduced 
an idea of new signature lighting, horizontal lighting, and a horizontal graphic that then would have a horizontal graphic in the evening signature also. This would be an idea to have a whole new rear identity theme for Saab. And here we see again on the 94X concept how it would manifest itself in a crossover execution. So now we see on a two-row crossover how we could see the realization of this horizontal rear end signature lighting graphic that would also have an evening signature with it where we can kind of see it lit up today. You see again the signature C pillar of Saab and you can see an overall execution of cleanliness that represents the Scandinavian design values. And then if Andrew can open up the back for me. Now on the inside we've got, as we usually do, we've not unlike on the Aero X concept, we've had another collaboration with Solomon, the sports equipment manufacturer. So here we see some Solomon skis sitting in a custom ski rack that's been designed for the 94X concept vehicle. And again, and there's also boots actually packaged underneath, all in the intent to communicate that really this is about an active lifestyle and it's a product that's designed to meet the needs of those types of people with those interests. So, and this happens to be just a very tidy package for that. Summary, what's exciting about the Saab 94X concept is that it gives us an idea of how we can see all the work that's gone into the Saab brand now manifest itself into a very relevant crossover, an important segment for Saab in the premium context. In the premium world of crossovers, this is an important step moving beyond from where we were with the 97X and moving into something that is really the right global scale. So we're really here as a test well to really look at what kind of reaction we can get to see if this is really the right move we should make. Excellent. Thank you very much All for right. your time. Thanks. Hello, I'm Carl Peter Forster. I'm the General Motors Europe President and the Chairman of Saab. Um, I'm a Saab enthusiast, and one of my, my jobs today is to grow and strengthen the Saab brand. I believe it's a brand with tremendous potential, so that is definitely a fun job. When it comes to GM's financial support of the Saab brand, could you educate us as to how the support has changed for the better moving ahead? Saab is one of the two strong premium brands of General Motors and we have continuously invested in that brand over the over over time of many many years now the problem was how do you spend the money and what you spend the money for and the problem was we have basically invested the money in differentiating Saabs where no customer would ever see feel the differentiation and what we are now doing is we want to we're working to broaden the Saab model car range to spend the money where the customer truly sees and feels it, where you, we have to be soft specific, and to look for synergies wherever the customer will not see and feel it. And that's the new strategy. The outcome will be we will broaden the Saab car, car line range. We will spend as much money as in the past, but we will have much more product for our customers. Excellent. Thank you very much for your time. My name is Erik Geers, and the way I pronounce it is not really Swedish, but it is actually Dutch. But uh, I hope that doesn't scare you away. I'm uh, already since Saab at, uh, since 1986, and I started actually in Holland. And Holland is a very specific and very strong Saab market, where Saab has a, a fantastic image, even uh, a better image than, for example, established brands like BMW and uh, Mercedes. So uh, from, a, from that perspective, uh, I think a good start, and uh, actually in... Uh, 96, I went over to Saab in, uh, in Sweden to become responsible for European communications, uh, basically working with the European media and trying to lift, of course, the image uh, of, of Saab. Uh, then I spent some time in the US, two years at Saab in Atlanta at the headquarters, uh, Saab Cars USA communications. That was a very short time before I went over to Zurich, uh, General Motors headquarters, uh, did a liaison work between Saab and uh, General Motors. And then uh, the year was not over, and then uh, they asked me to come and take the job as global communications manager at, or director at uh, Saab in, uh, in Sweden. Excellent. 
two offices, one in Pixbo in uh, Gothenburg, more the commercial uh, uh, office, and one uh, close to the factory, basically on the factory. Uh, some people refer to as the oven. That's where we actually build and uh, make uh, the saps. Great, excellent, thank you. Uh, can you tell us uh, about kind of what we're doing today? We have this 94X here, this biopower concept. Yeah. Uh, obviously, the, the biopower technologies come from Sweden. It's a, it's a product of that environment. Yeah. Uh, we also have the cross-wheel drive, which also is another product that, yeah. that sa Swedish engineering. Yeah. Um, can you speak to uh, how good do you think that's going to be moving forward down the road? When we took off, let's say, two years ago, showing the world what our capabilities were. We showed it in the form of a highly spectacular Aero X. That car basically symbolized what the road ahead is for Saab. Not just in design, but also in terms of understanding what the brand is going, where the brand is going. And also making sure that the world understands that General Motors is fully behind Saab, because it was a big investment. So, uh, and I think that car surprised very many people around the world and until today it is extremely high in demand. We just talked to a Hollywood producer who's going to have it in uh, one of his uh, new films uh, with, some, uh, with some famous uh, movie stars and so on. And this car is still extremely hot. Now, what it also means is that we set the standard very high. So everything that was following that car, we knew had to deliver on what we promised that time. So today we were actually very glad and we worked very hard to have the 94X uh, be presented by uh, Carl Peter Foster, and you might think, yes, he's the president of General Motors Europe. You know, what's his connection to Saab? But he's actually the chairman of Saab Automobile. So he has a very strong connection to uh, Saab. He is there uh, every other month, talk to the unions and stuff, and do his work as a uh, chairman. And of course, uh, the president, uh, Rick Wagner, who announced it also, just shows what the commitment is uh, of the General Motors leadership in, into Saab. And that's basically the essence uh, and, and at the heart of the, of the, uh, the issue. That is, we knew with 9.3 and 9.5, we had a too limited product range. We had to do something. You know, we have swings. We know we need to come between 150 and 200,000 to have a very sound business. We don't need to be bigger than that. That's perfect for us. But we knew one thing, with a 9.7X and all respect to 9.2X, that doesn't really work because people, of course, understand that they are not truly uh, Scandinavian. So whatever we do right now, everything is done and built in the Saab brand center. And the Saab Brand Center is an organization that just secures that every Saab, but not just Saab, every way of how, you know, way we communicate, how the dealers look like, how the communication brochures look like, our press kits, that it is 100% Saab, which means it has to deliver on the three values that represent the Saab brand. Progressive Scandinavian design, sporty driver focus, so performance oriented, and then responsible performance. And why is Scandinavian so important? Well, first of all, Nobody else than Volvo has it. So no, no Audi, no uh, Lexus, anybody else can say that they're from Scandinavia. And being from Scandinavia is a sort of a strong brand because Scandinavians and me being from Holland know what it means and how these Scandinavians work. Safety is not invented by a marketing department that suddenly you know, comes up with, hey, you know, uh, hmm, it's safety that sells, you know, customers like it, so let's put it in our cars. I mean, this is a true big demand from Swedish society. If you don't have safety in your product, you don't sell. Fiat, of course, was one of the people, uh, brands that, uh, that uh, understood this. And of course, they did a lot now with safety. Renault, the same thing. And these cars are basically invisible in Sweden. And the other thing is, of course, the respect for the environment. If you live in Sweden that I do right now, the environment is around the corner, whether you live in the city or not. It's everywhere around you. So care for environment is two of the, the, say, care for environment and safety are the two cornerstones of, uh, let's say, the DNA of a, of a suite, you can say that. Uh, you've worked with Saab for a uh, number of years now. If you look at uh, 21, if my math's correct there, um, what have you seen over the years that really um, inspires you and, yeah. and tells you that this is a great company to work with. Uh, there's a lot of new products coming out, and uh, where do you see that for, for you and saying, you know, this is a company I believe in, yeah. these are values that I believe in, is not just an employee, yeah. but also a person yeah. in society. Yeah. Uh, you know, what are the, some of those things that you, know, you think about? And also, um, that's the first question. And the second question would be, were there many certain uh, uh, key pivotal milestones over your career with Saab that you think were extremely important for the brand, this being another one of those, and maybe just kind of give us a little history lesson, if you will, or yeah. recap of what those were. Yeah. Well, first of all, question number one, what is, what, what is so attractive about it? First of all, it's the people. I mean, for those of you who have been in, uh, in Sweden, 
know that uh, the Swedes are fantastic people. They are sort of humble, but they are, know what they're doing. I mean, the country is only you know nine million people. Where I come from, Holland, 12 the size less than uh, Sweden, and twice the number of people. It's a completely different different way. But they have huge companies. Yeah, you know the Volvos, the IKEAs, you name it. Uh, so there's something mysterious about uh, about uh, Sweden. Uh, so don't underestimate them. Um, yeah, what I like about Sweden, of course, is the fact that it is a country that is high up in Europe. And if you live there, you know that somewhere after the summer, the light goes out and it's getting dark. The snow is falling down. There are elks on the road. So this all requires cars that can just deal with it. I mean, if you drive from where I live in the part, southern part of Sweden, you drive up, there's nobody anymore, apart from maybe a couple of elks and uh, moose and stuff. And uh, if that thing, which is high on, the, on, the, on its legs, and weighs about six, seven hundred kilos, comes through your A-pillar, you, know, you might as well have some good A-pillars, I can tell you. And I've talked to a lot of Swedes that have experienced that, uh, that uh, thank God we were in a SAP. So that was one of the uh, things. Um, yeah, and some of the highlights. I mean, there have been many, but when I started at SAP in, uh, back in the 80s, the, the turbo was the yuppie car. That was the car for people to have. Now, this was on the advent for the Talladega that was also going on. And that was, yep. uh, yeah, that was an event for Talladega. But the turbo and the Saab, the black turbo, that was the car to have. Everybody had it. You know, the, the, the people that want to, well, show it off a little bit, but still in a sort of understated way to say something against BMW or Mercedes, had it. In London, it was all over the place. But then, honestly, we lost it a little bit. Um, and then also, if you then look through the history, we sometimes blame, you know, GM for, you know, when they took over, then, you know, we lost sort of the soul. I mean, we have been very inconsistent. The key has always been here in the 900s, and then suddenly with the 9000, it was here. It was before General Motors came in. So we have to be very honest that Saab hasn't been very consistent in the way that they executed the, the products. So when Jan Alke came, actually, who you also had an interview with, I mean, he, the first thing he said, we have to be consistent in communication and the way we develop products. And they have to be genuinely Swedish or Scandinavian. They have to deliver. It doesn't mean that you have to build them always in Sweden. Uh, that's, from a business perspective, not always the smartest thing to do. And of course, we want to make some, uh, some good money to invest in future products. So, uh, but they have to be generally uh, uh, Swedish. So there were a number of highlights. Uh, and of course, uh, the Aero X, as I said before, that did so much internally and externally. And this has inspired so many people, engineers around the world, so many ge people within General Motors everywhere around the world that they know that this is what Saab is all about and this is what we're going to build in the future. A unique position. Excellent. And it's really true. It's not a marketing story. I know that there's so much passion at, uh, at Saab and so many people that believe that this, is, this has such incredible potential. And I think it was very nice for us to hear now that Bob Lutz, uh, during one of the last launches in the US, said uh, Saab is the crown jewel in the portfolio. So that was for us something like, okay guys, now we have this position. And that's sort of what I uh, said initially. That's also the reason why the 94X was next to Mr. Wagoner for a long time during his uh, presentation today. And that's a position that we now need to use and build on. And I think that uh, when you're looking into the future, you're gonna see a lot more. And that future is very close because uh, and very nearby. We're gonna surprise the world very soon. Excellent, well thank you very much for your time. Okay, I'm Jan Oke Onsen. I'm the managing director for Saab. I've been in this position since 2005, so it's almost three years by now. Uh, you uh, worked with Saab for a number of years. Could you speak to kind of some of your historical reference points of what you've done along the way? Well, you know, I started in the early 70s, actually, uh, as I was uh, studying computer science. And at that time, Saab Scania was actually manufacturing mainframe computers. Com competing with IBMs and the like, and uh, that's how I got into Saab, because they had a big mainframe computer that I was educated to work on, and uh, yeah, then after a few years I found cars maybe being a little bit more interesting, so, uh, but uh, yeah, it was a good start, it was a good experience. Uh, could you speak about uh, some of the new products we have here, and uh, mainly the 94X that you have behind you, and uh, what that means for Saab globally, but also maybe more specifically your market in Sweden? 
uh, where that's going to put this car and, and this, is this going to affect that or not? Well, a, a couple of years ago, we laid a, uh, a, the groundwork, you can say, for the future of Saab. And uh, that was basically uh, in three areas. Product expansion, product new renewal was one. We talked about the uh, focus and strengthening the brand, back to the roots a little bit. And then thirdly, to integrate better with GM so we could utilize the benefits of being a part of General Motors. So those were the three cornerstones, you can say, of our, of our strategy. And of course, on the product renewal, the first thing we did was to show the Aero X, which was actually a way to try to describe the future design language and also how we want to position the brand. And uh, with that as a foundation, of course, the work on developing the new products and expanding the portfolio started. And, you can say we decided immediately that we need to renew the 9.5, a new 9.5, and we also need to expand, meaning get into the crossover segment. And what you see here behind me is the, uh, a concept car uh, that is actually our crossover vehicle for the future, which will uh, participate in a segment that is growing in importance, not only here in the US, but also elsewhere in the world. And uh, we think we have a, a very competitive offer that uh, the concept actually represents. Uh, so it will be good additional business for not only um, our existing customers, but also we think that most of it is going to be incremental business. Today here in the US, about 30% of our customers have a sport utility in the garage of any kind. And of course, we can only offer the 97X today and this will give us an opportunity to really uh, penetrate that the existing customer base as well as, of course, do some damage to our competitors, we hope, with the, with the new crossover. With the uh, biopower that's uh, really ubiquitous now in Sweden, uh, do you see more of that thing happening with uh, the 94X maybe even in that market or other products in that market? Uh, and globally, and uh, do you see some of the uh, technologically advanced right sizing in the engines being uh, something you'll continue doing uh, down the road? Well, our strategy, first of all, is 100% clear in terms of that our future powertrain strategy will be turbocharged engines with mostly four cylinder applications. In other words, right sizing the, uh, the engine uh, size but with turbocharging getting more performance. E85 or ethanol as an example gives us even greater opportunities because through the turbo technology and the uh, characteristics of the fuel we can take even more performance out uh, of our vehicles which means that you can even lower the, the size of the engine if you so decide. Reality though is with crossovers that today's environment is here in the US vast majority is six cylinder gasoline engines, and in Europe, of course, 80% is, is diesel applications. So for the uh, initial part, of course, that will be the core of our business. But we see also alternative fuel coming as, a, as uh, in terms of growing in importance, not only in, in Europe, but also here in the US. So over time, I'm sure you'll see that also. What do you see in the next five years uh, when it comes to products? Uh, do we see more crossovers, or are you starting to see some smaller segment vehicles coming in? Um, and uh, could you, maybe you could elaborate more on that. And that, was that for all markets, or a certain market that you're only going to see this? Well, you, I think you have globally two trends that are happening in the premium. One is crossovers is becoming more important. Segment is growing. Secondly, what's happening is that most premium manufacturers are moving down in terms of a vehicle below, in our case, the 9.3. You can say the uh, uh, BMW 1 Series, Audi A3, Volvo C30 as an example, are typical examples of that. Uh, so these two trends we see happening, and that's where we're going to penetrate with our crossover as well as the vehicle below, uh, below the, the 9.3. However, the 9.5 segment and the 9.3 segment remains very, very important and also relatively big in size. So you need to be in that, in that area as well, which we will be with our new 9.5 and the 9.3. Can you tell us a little bit about when we might be able to see some of these coming in uh, into the market for availability, for purchase? 
Well, our priority at this point is the uh, crossover and the new 95. And the crossover we're looking at some, sometime during next year that we'll see it in production. And uh, uh, it'll be a nice addition to our, our portfolio. And, and the 9.5 as well? Well, well the 9.5 is about the same timing, you can say, uh, as the, uh, the crossover. It might be a little bit different in terms of how we introduce it in different markets. But before the end of this decade, you'll see, you'll see a new 9.5 and a crossover. And that smaller segment car, uh, that after both of these model launches, do you know when that might be? Or do you have a ballpark? Well, of course, I know when it's going to happen, but <laughs> unfortunately, I can't, I can't tell you that. But of course, I know when it's going to happen. Excellent. Uh, and I guess wrapping up, uh, is there anything you might want to share with Saab enthusiasts about uh, what it means for you to come to work every day with Saab and the products that are offered and uh, kind of the environmental stance that Saab has now and what you feel you know, being part of that means to you? Well, I, I think that most, most Saab enthusiasts are going to be very happy in terms of that uh, what the direction for Saab going into the future is very much based on the tremendous heritage that we have. Uh, if you look at 30 years of turbocharging as an example, if you look at elements that making a vehicle a little bit unique in terms of design, the uh, aircraft heritage has a big impact of course. and. Uh, you can say, of course, safety, practicality are like cornerstones of the brand. So I'm sure that all enthusiasts are going to be happy about that. In addition, you can say, last year we celebrated our 60th anniversary. Uh, many of our enthusiasts, I'm sure, participated remote or in, in Trollathan. And, uh, you know, the response that we get when we have events like this, that's more what makes you want to go back to work every day in tough times as well as in, in good times. And the support is, of course, tremendously appreciated. Do you think the uh, tough times are behind us now and uh, we're moving on to bigger and brighter things? Is there anything well, else you can... Well, reality is you have good days and bad days. But, uh, <laughs> but you can say in general, I think the future for Saab is bright. Excellent. Well, thank you very much for your time. No problem. Okay, hello, my name is Kai Sakkerson and I'm out of Sweden, Scandinavia. Standing here in front of the new Saab 94X uh, sport concept car and it's pretty nice to stand there today. I'm a um, professional skier and I ski and we work together with a company called Solomon. We make skis and uh, we have this partnership with Saab and therefore we have, as you see, developed a nice ski rack. <laughs> And this comes in handy for me when I travel around the world. I travel all around to, to find the best mountains and find the best snow to ski in. And as I travel so much, I use the car every day and, and go on roads which is pretty far out. So it's a long way from the big roads, you know. So this car has to cross wheel drive and it will take me anywhere. Got what it takes. Kai, could you please show us how the system works? As you can see, this platform, it actually moves, so it's a sliding floor. So you have the skis on the rack inside, so you don't have to have them on the roof, which gives the car much more fuel efficient, so you can drive longer. <laughs> you put the skis here, when you're arriving to the hill, you just click, and it comes out. And actually, under this floor, you have a, a compartment where you can put your ski boots. It's also ventilated, so you put on the heater in the morning and you put your boots there. When you arrive to the, you know, the cold hills of Vermont, you just pick out your boots and you put them on and they're warm and dry. You ski all day, you come back to the car, put your skis on the rack, and down with the boots again, with the wet, dirty boots down in the compartment. And uh, you put on the heating system and it will dry. Will, will this be available for uh, snowboarders as well? <laughs> Today we mostly <laughs> did it for uh, for skis, but of course, maybe a snowboard will fit. <laughs> Not right now. Excellent, thanks. But it, also another thing that is really cool is the rubberized floor. On the whole inside of the trunk we have rubber. So if you put dirty stuff in there, you can just, uh, when you get home, take it out and you can wash it with water and we have a drain in the compartment that will go out. 
as I said, I'm a professional skier and travel everywhere. And used to go to Colorado. I travel around, you know, in Breckenridge and uh, Winter Park, Aspen, and Vail, and I love it there. The snow is so light, so it's pretty good powder skiing. And can't wait to bring this car on the roads there. You know, it got the cross-wheel drives so that will take me anywhere where it's hard to get. Also, they're introducing the new 100% ethanol biopower engine, which is really interesting. Since I'm living in the mountains and so close to the nature, you know, you really get aware of the of the nature is changing. So to have an engine like like it's uh, environmentally friendly feels really good. Excellent. Keep the powder. Thanks a lot. Hello there. My name is Kjell Bergström. I'm responsible for powertrain development uh, within the Saab group in Sweden. Uh, my involvement and my team's involvement with this vehicle you see back on, behind me is uh, for the engine, the uh, 94X uh, turbo, the biopower. The biopower is a uh, name we use for engines that are developed to be able to run on ethanol. And uh, the thing with biopower is that it utilizes the power of the fuel, that it is not just a petroleum replacer, it is something more. We utilize the high uh, octane number in the fuel, basically, so we get out more power, higher efficiency for the same given circumstances as with gasoline. Can you tell us about uh, the 94X and what that means to uh, biopower availability in Saab's product range? Uh, the 94X here is the first uh, Saab introduction or intro into the crossover segment or these lighter sport utility vehicles. And that area is definitely an area where we need to go environmental friendly. And that's why it's so important to have a powertrain that is running on renewable fuels. So this engine, this combination is very important for the future. Can you speak about uh where biopower really started? Um. The biopower technology or the biopower story actually started around 2001 on the Geneva Auto Show where we produ introduced or showed an engine that could be run with variable compression ratio. And uh, that is uh, a way of producing an engine that could be small and could be large. What we did with those engines, after showing it to the uh, media and the, the audience, was to develop the concept, to look into what advantages does this concept give you. And we realized then that the combination of that engine concept and renewable fuels gave us more opportunities than we from the start realized. So we ran a, a program together with the universities in Sweden, looking into what, what actual advantages are there in this fuel, the combination of variable compression. And then we found out that the ethanol, for instance, gives you a much, much higher advantage if you have a possibility to utilize certain things. That is, to increase the compression ratio, to increase the boost pressure, because what limits an engine today it's not the engine, it's the fuel. The fuel cracks it up, it gets into knocking. That is the problem. With ethanol, you don't end up in knocking. You have a freedom to go further, which means you can have a higher specific output. In the long term, it means you can have a smaller engine. Some people call it downsizing. We call it right-sizing. The right engine for the right application. And that is the future with biopower. What does it mean going to work at Saab Sweden every day, having an opportunity to really shape uh, the environment, also shape people's peace of mind uh, when choosing Saab as a brand uh, that they can believe in? For me specifically, and you might notice I still have a beard, I was in the 1968-1969 in the generation. We were protesting, flying the banners for an environment, and at that time I was at the university and we thought that everyone else was not listening. At that time, even at the, the university, there were no courses for environmentalists. We had one volunteer course that we could attend to, which I did. And since then, I've been trying to work with different kinds of, of uh, 
solutions to make sure that you meet the environmental uh, requests. So now, being if you can't beat them, join them. Being on the inside, I think I have an excellent opportunity to do what my heart and my mind tells me. So that is why I get the energy just by knowing that I go to work working with the biopower. Excellent. Well, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. My name is Kjell-Oak Eriksson. I'm the vehicle line director at Sabat Mobile in Sweden. I've been in this company for quite many years. Joined the company in 1972 and been responsible for a number of different areas inside the company. My time in the company has been very, very exciting. Been working with many different products through the organization and also had the opportunity to work at General Motors in the tech center up in Warren to develop our future cars. Our history you know, is based on turbocharged technology, cars which were very fun to drive. We like safety because that's a part of our past experience and safety and fun to drive has always been something we have looked forward to ensure that we could keep inside our brand. We came with a turbocharged technology which was a revolution at that point in time. Even if not turbocharged, was new for the automotive industry. But the concept, how we introduced that into the passenger car, was a revolution in the late 70s where it was introduced. Today, of course, we have another type of products, I would say more modern, and as well more maybe exciting for the customers. We have started to focus very much on the uh, the ergonomics situation with the biopower a concept where you use E85 combination with the turbocharged technology to really ensure that you utilize the technology to get more power but at the same time lower the emission into the environment. So that has been something very, very important for us. Do you have uh, some uh, good insight into having historical experience working with Saab Scania uh, as to uh, where your position today being maybe a more mobile and flexible organization opposed to maybe what it may have been before? Are there uh, benefits in each organization and do you... Maybe you can give us a little bit of insight yeah. into both where we are. The old time uh, during the management of Saab Scania was maybe more different because it was a strong focus on the truck side, on the aircraft, and some other of the heavy industry inside that corporation. Today we are in General Motors, which is a car manufacturer. Much more focus and knowledge on the car side. And uh, I think this was a very good opportunity and also the only way for Saab really to continue to exist as a separate brand. Because as you know, developing mental cars is so expensive. And the technology is moving so fast and you need to be continuously investing in new technologies because that's where our competitors are. So if you don't follow that, you're out of the market. What's it like to have worked with Saab for all these years, uh, you know, out of any other potential industry to work for? Uh... Yeah. There have been many histories I've been through through the company. But, uh, you know, I, I think we have had different focus in the past. We maybe didn't consolidate the brand as good as we're doing today. We had the rally area when we had Steve Carlson, Steve Blomqvist, and we have many of the other old guys who was really rally fans. And that was also the reason why we started to focus so much on the sportness of the car. Because you could see that there was a close connection from the customer, the interest in the rally, and which we could communicate with the, our technology into the cars. So many of the innovations came from these guys who had a very close cooperation with our engineering staff. They tried to do something different. And you know, you can say that some people said that Saab was a little bit of a quirky car attract the professor, doctors, professionals. But I would say that uh, these people are very intelligent. They are uh, people who make a statement in the society and they play a very important role for the society as well as carrying the Saab brand name into their product, into their daily life and the society they are living. So I think that customer group is something we really would like to keep in the future as well. Is there anything else that uh, you think that uh, Saab enthusiasts should know uh, today and uh, moving into the, looking into the future? 
I think they should know that we are really focused on what we are doing, very commitment to the brand. And that commitment also have led to, I would say, a clear strategy for the future of what we would like to do. As you have seen here today, we have now introduced a new crossover. We know that that is a segment which is growing very, very fast here in the US as well as in Europe. So we believe that the timing for this concept coming to the market here by the uh, sometime next year is a good timing for the company as well. Excellent. Well, thank you very much for your time today. My pleasure. Thank you. Uh, my name is Mark Adams. I'm the Vice President of Design for General Motors Europe and obviously a uh, very passionate thing of mine is developing the Saab brand and, and we're using this car today to really illustrate the next level of the story of how we're going to take uh, the design brand cues that we showed in the Aero X and bring that through closer to production to start expanding our portfolio in a very exciting way. Could you tell us a little bit about how that design process works? Uh, about this design brand design center we hear about in Sweden, how that works with Russell Heim and other design studios. Um, the actual way the vehicles are being developed now is that we do have a Saab brand design center and that, that's a small group of about 18 people that really are immersing themselves in the future of the Saab brand, where we need to take the brand. Um, there's a facility close uh, to Gothenburg, just on the outskirts in Pixbo, and we have regular communication. I visit, um, we, we use our technology internally to really communicate, making sure that we consistently execute the Saab brand with the Scandinavian values that are very important. Can you talk about more about those values and how that's executed here once again? We have the Aero X, of course, as an influence, but are there other things that we see in the 94X that may end up being shown in future product models? Okay. Yeah, I mean, the way we're taking the brand forward is really trying to, to get the rich Scandinavian heritage and the aircraft heritage and really create an aesthetic within the vehicle that starts communicating those values. So, for example, on the exterior, we showed it on the Aero X and this vehicle, we have the full wraparound glass, which really gives this cockpit feel, again, aircraft link. The large openings down below, almost signifying the side pods of an aircraft. Fuselage, really sleek body. Um, all of these things really subtly linking it to that, that rich heritage. And then in the same time, the Scandinavian aspect comes through in the simplicity and, and classical execution of the design. We have a few very unique details that are, will be in future production models that um, really deal with premium in a new way. And we're using the so-called ice block look Within the headlamps, for example, we don't, we're not using bright work, traditional bright work that other brands would use. We're using this almost glass slash ice look to really create a very unique feeling. And that same thing is applied both on the rear of the vehicle in the very unique tail lamps, which have this new signature lighting of these strip lights that will be fully illuminated all the time. And then when you move to the interior, we're using the same things again, using this ice block look on the center console within the cluster, certain individual items, again, to give a very unique feeling to the car. Could you talk about also uh, what it means to be a designer, being privileged to work with the Saab brand, and kind of what, what does that mean for you, coming to work every day, saying, I have this great product with a great history? I mean, one of the things that is really exciting about the Saab brand is how, particularly from a designer's perspective, we have an instant connection. And I never have any problems explaining to a young new designer that comes in to join us. Um, right, I want you to work on a Saab product. They instantly get it. People really understand it. It really has growth and potential. And that's what really makes it exciting that we know how to take that car to the next level or all of our portfolio to the next level. Um, you know, as I said, the Aero X was the staging point to, to take some of that through. And now this car gets closer to production, you know, really shows the production intent of where we're going to take some of those values. And you'll see over the coming months and coming years how we're really going to expand the portfolio and really make the brand very, very exciting. 
Are there any little uh, takeaways we can uh, have from this experience with you today about what we might see in the future? Yeah, I mean, the good thing uh, about the brand is that we are definitely expanding the portfolio. So the core vehicles that we have today will be greatly expanded upon. We're looking at creating a very unique brand going forward, really looking back a little bit to the rich heritage of the days of the 900 Turbo, you know, where Saab really stood for something very distinctive in the marketplace. We're going to be doing that with all of our new products from small to large vehicles. Each of those will be very distinctive in their, in their marketplace and have a very unique character. Excellent. Thank you very much for your okay, time. Okay, my pleasure. Thank you. Uh, hi, my name is Roger McCormick. I'm the marketing director for Saab and we're uh, really excited to be here, Ryan. Excellent. Well, can you tell us a little bit about your history with Saab and uh, kind of how uh, you came into this position and uh, kind of go from there? Where, where is this going to lead us? Yeah, absolutely. I started with Saab about a year and a half ago. I uh, started on the product side. So I've been working in product development for, like I say, a year and a half, uh, working on all the new stuff coming to market, including the new 9.3 that we just uh, introduced for 08, as well as the Turbo X, which we're going to be bringing out here in, uh, in early spring. So uh, it's been a real excited time. And uh, in addition, we've been talking about some of the new markets that we plan on entering in the future. We just showed the 9.4X concept vehicle, so I've been very involved in talking about uh, the production vehicle that that hints at that's, uh, that's coming as well. So uh, again, I've been very enmeshed in the, uh, in the product side and looking real forward to, uh, uh, to marketing the things that we've been working so hard on for this year and a half. Could you tell us uh, kind of a, maybe a brief primer as to what we may expect with the advertising uh, efforts that you're starting to look into uh, for the new product range, uh, yeah. but also the new year. And, and, and I think it would be important to kind of uh, discuss how the, tr the Born From Jets campaign will also evolve right. uh, along that time. Yeah, we've been, we've been very happy with the success of Born From Jets. We think that it's very authentic. Uh, we think the things that we need to fall back on um, in marketing are the things that are true to our heritage. Uh, the things like the aircraft heritage, you know, it's very authentic. I mean, it was, a, it is a company that was founded by 16 aircraft engineers, so very authentic. But in addition, uh, the Scandinavian um, influence in the brand obviously needs to come through as well. And so we have no in intention of changing the Born From Jets theme, because again, we, we're very happy with it. We think there's definitely a, um, a positive aspect to staying consistent. We think it's authentic, but there is also the idea that uh, maybe we can take a closer look at how that translates into the, into the products, what that means to the product in terms of being Born From Jets, and then also, again, um, uh, maybe playing into more our heritage, uh, again, being very authentic with uh, the Swedishness, uh, the Scandinavian uh, influences in the product. Uh, how is it like uh, transitioning from uh, two advertising agencies in such a critical time for new products, and and and, and where where that where is that going to go? Yeah, well, well, I'm in a unique position. Actually, I won't be experiencing that transition all that much because, as I say, I've been working very much uh, on the product side uh, in the year and a half I've been at Saab, and now I'll be working with uh, with our advertising agency. So it's kind of a fresh start for me. It's a fresh start for them. So it's definitely a kind of a new set of eyes on what we've been doing. So I think that, that that offers us a big opportunity to make sure we're doing the right things and we're, we're doing the right things in terms of evolution of the marketing going forward. Can you tell us uh, how that's going to be influenced, what factors, what things you're, obviously you talked about the elements and how that's going to be executed, yes. but what, what considerations do you use? Uh, do, do you speak to certain people? Do you talk with dealers? Uh, what includes that pack, what's included in that package that convinces you that this is where we're going to go with that advertising campaign? Yeah, um, well, first I would, I would be very clear in saying I don't know exactly how that's going to evolve going into the future. I mean, there's a lot of different roads we're looking at going on. Uh, I mentioned to you the key things that, that ground us fundamentally, the Scandinavian influence, the aircraft heritage, uh, the kind of the progressive nature of the brand. That will definitely found, uh, you know, ground us as we go forward. But as I say, I'm not exactly sure how that's going to evolve. We're still working on that. But um, 
uh, you know, we're, we're looking at all the things we're doing from a product standpoint, entering new markets, et cetera, and we think that gives us a big opportunity to broaden our appeal to some degree, although we are a niche brand and we're, we, need to, we know we need to be very true to who we are, but again, we have the opportunity to kind of broaden, our, broaden ourselves going forward. Where do you see um, yourself and, and your involvement going uh, with Saab now that you've taken on this great responsibility that I would say is probably one of the most important responsibilities now with Saab's uh, you know, ability to communicate how uh, confident they are in the brand and how they are going to be able to do that moving forward? Yeah, we're really excited about the prospects going forward and I'm excited to be a, a part of that. We think that um, Although we're very happy with where we stand as a brand in the market, we think there's a lot of untapped potential. We think we have a lot to offer uh, in our products, in, in our products that we have on the market today and the new stuff we've been developing. We think that, uh, that the opportunities are great going forward. Again, we're always come back to, we have to do that in a very smart way. We know we, we, uh, we uh, appeal to a very intelligent customer and we take that very seriously. And so we know what we do has to be authentic and we have to grow in a very smart way. It can't be, uh, uh, it can't be done willy nilly. So uh, we take that very seriously. And I, I, I'm really excited about kind of um, uh, being at the forefront of where we take the brand into the future with some really exciting stuff coming that uh, some stuff you you reported on like the 94X concept which really hints where we're going with a uh, luxury crossover vehicle um, that's all Saab um, so you know, it's it's a it's a bright future for Saab, I think, and I, I'm just glad to be part of it. In all of your uh, history working uh, in, in in multiple capacities, uh, what does it mean for you? Uh, you know, working with Saab, how does it feel going into work every day, saying I have this great opportunity? Where is that? Where is that? Uh... Oh, it's great, and it's great working with our counterparts uh, in Sweden. We, uh, you mentioned earlier, you asked a question earlier about where we get. Um, where we kind of derive our direction from, and it's a lot of things. It's obviously, we work very closely with our counterparts in Sweden. Uh, there's the, uh, the Saab Brand Center that is kind of the, uh, the, the, the place where we go for all things Saab and really to get a feel for what is the brand all about. And, they're, um, and so they're obviously a huge influence in, as well as we talk to our customers. We read the blogs, we read those things, and we take them very seriously. Um, we, so we talk to our customers, we talk to the, to the very passionate Saab customers as well as, the, as those who are just a little bit more casual Saab, Saab owners. And uh, like I say, we, we, um, we also talk to our counterparts over in, um, over in Sweden as well on a daily basis, of course. Excellent. Well, thank you very much for your time. Thanks. I, I appreciate helpful. the opportunity. Thank you. Thanks again.